93.7 The Music FM. What you just heard was Green Day with American Idiot, <laughs> Godsmack with Whiskey Hangover, um, and Disturbed with Atlantic Fusion. And before that um, was Jekyll and Hyde by Five Finger Death Punch. And you're listening to The J Red Show. <clears throat> I'm going to merge basketball and wrestling into one segment since I don't know how much time I have, but... The Bulls beat the Lakers 118. To, my favorite team, the Chicago Bulls, beat the Lakers 118 to 110. Young Gun Lakers looking for another win. You can't count them out this year. They're bailing to make some noise. So if they played any kind of defense, they probably would have won most of the out of the games. Yeah. Just look at the rebound difference. It's just sad when you have this many young guns who have the talent but left the mental part. There's no reason they should ever be hard hustled. I hate Moses' Mos- game. He's got 20 inch vertical moves. Like he has a cerebral palsy, has bricks for hands, and a reaction time of a kitten with Lyme disease. <laughs> Tonight, Luke finally shut Moz down with 20 minutes because Moz was garbage. I'm glad we, the Lakers have three Angel, have Russell, but I wish they had a legit center. I love Black and, and against many teams, and against almost any second unit, he's more than fine. Honestly, I start Black in a few games. It can't hurt. If you look at Black's per minutes, per numbers, he's much better than Moz. We need a good young center. I thought Zoo was going to be it, but the last time he played, he was terrible. He looked like he was sedated. That's about as good as a 2-9 game as you can get from Rondo. I love seeing him to keep him, him in the T.O.s down, even against the Lakers. Jimmy Butler is bailing out of his mind right now. Overall, it's a real good game the Bulls play, with the, by the Bulls players. Lakers had no answer for Butler. I liked a lot of the game for the backups. Lopez and Taj really worked well. Really Valentine had some good moments and some bad ones, but he's learning. Ken had a decent game. There's a, there's a lot of good team defense. This is one thing I this is one thing I can't stand on Nico Merrick anymore. He can't pass. He kills a team with bad defense. He isn't clutch at all. He's hit some threes in here and there, but he's never made the shots at the end of the games. That last few minutes, he had almost single handedly kept let LA back at the game. His rebounds were like Gelsels. Weak defensive rebounds. Nance Jr. made him look like a chump. He is. How do you get to the line with him two separate three point fouls and uh, hit two of the six attempts? Which is worse, be Murray being an absolute flop or, or Hoiberg leaving him out there in the fourth quarter? Besides Nico, a lot of players had a good game. Chicago blew it against the Clippers, but I think the Lakers have so much potential out there, which makes it an interesting game. If the, Lake, if the same Lakers team that beat the Warriors earlier this season and also last two seasons turn out, they'll have no problem winning this one. Knicks beat the Hawks 104-94. Breaking news. The Eastern Conference still sucks. Very telling. Or it's very, one thing that's very telling. Orlando would have made the playoffs this year. They, they started today. They have also failed to score 70 points two or three times already this season. Blazers beat the Nets 129-109. Lynn is very soft and injured again. Um, so that's, Lynn's not going to help the Nets. But um, Pacers beat the Thunder 115-111. Um, the game was too much of Russell Westbrook and not enough of the team. Assisted rebounds were misleading. Westbrook had a triple double, but he also took three or four shots and isolated the team with him playing one on five ball. Maybe this is the reason Durant left the Thunder. Westbrook forgot that basketball is a team game and you win as a team. And I thought Kobe had retired. It's Donovan's fault. He mu- he put Kotner in at the start of the point forward to help Russ out. It's the coach's fault. But I don't think I don't think Westbrook played a horrible game. Have you ever played street ball and had all the teammates can't hit the shots? So you defend hard, rebound, you set them up for easy baskets. And the team is tied, and you know the teammates can't hit their shots. And you have a better chance of winning if you take your shots, but the other team knows they are double team and double team you. It's not Westbrook's fault they have such a low shooting percentage. It's the management's fault for not putting anyone capable of hitting the few baskets so the other team's defense can focus hard on Westbrook. Let's not forget the one you tied the game with when they tied the three violations. You can't have the same expectations for this team because Durant has left, and as we are replaced him, playing time in the single, single and Grant. Give Westbrook a break already. Kings beat the Raptors 102 in 1999. They're saying the shot took about 2.5 seconds instead of 2.4 on the clock, but the clock never starts instantaneously. Starting the clock at 0.1 or less after the fat contact, assuming their timing is the official, the better reaction time would with the, the world class sprinter. They'd be disqualified for a sprint a reaction time at 0.99. And as in, it's impossible to take it be that quick. Horrible officiating, even before the ridiculous ending. There's always a clock operation reaction time. <coughs> they obviously saw the tip because the clock started to roll before T. Ross got to possession. Dennis Brisbane, not to mention, Ross could have shaved 0.1 or 0.2 seconds if he had saw the clock close to zero. That decision is simply disgusting. If I'm Dwayne Casey, 
Here is my question. If you t okay, if you took five minutes to review it carefully and make sure the Kings didn't get hosed, then you actually blow the entire call. Why doesn't the league acknowledge it and play it and, they and they play it all the time? Even if they had to, to play it all the time tomorrow in or in Toronto, the league just can't apologize. The league just can't issue an apology in the situation. It took five minutes in the replay center and all these professionals blew it. Even us fans can see they blew it. These things can cause playoff positioning. Finally, the Nuggets beat the Jazz 105-91. Snyder would bench Mac if he was, he was killing them and, and letting them play. He took three minutes and he had more than six points in Mac had his whole time. Mac just stinks, sucks. Trade him and let Nito play. On to wrestling. Um, Survivor Series was yesterday. <laughs> First was a, a Divas, um, a Raw Divas um, tag match team. Team uh, it was a between Raw and SmackDown. Team Raw had Charlotte, Sasha Banks, Bailey, Alicia Fox, Nia Jack, Dana Brooke. And they defeated Team SmackDown with Natalia, Carmella, Alexa Bliss, Naomi, and Becky Lynch. Um, this was a very solid match. You can see improvements from the Divas ever since the Divas Revolution began. It was a solid Divas star match. Team Raw won as Charlotte, Cat, and Bailey were the last two standing. Before the match, SmackDown's team captain Nikki Bella was attacked by stage and declared unable to compete. And it was replaced by Natalia. Good, because I can't stand Nikki Bella as a wrestler. Carmella was eliminated by Fox after a scissors kick. Fox was eliminated by Bliss after a twisted Bliss. In the end, um, it was taken on to Bailey and Charlotte, the sole survivors for Raw, and then after the match, Charlotte attacked Bailey. The second match for the Intercontinental title was The Miz versus Sami Zayn. I give it three and a half stars. It had the potential to be better, but Sami Zayn was fighting a leg injury, and he was kind of slow, so that hurt the match. Also, it was a bad ending. Zayn applied a figure four lock on the Miz, but Maurice hit him rang the bell, distracted Zayn. Miz pinned um, Zayn for the one, two, three, and for the roll up. I didn't like that ending because, like, did you really have to remind us of the Montreal screw job? I mean, Zayn's injury hurt him, but all in all, it was a good match. I have faith it'll be better. Tag team match. 10 on 10 tag team a match. Um, where there was a New Day, Sheamus, and Cesaro, Enzo Amore, and Kat, the Shining Stars, and Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson defeated SmackDown's Heath Slater, Rhino, the Hype Brothers, Alpha, Amer Alpha America, American Alpha, and Breezango, and the Usos. My only complaint about this is that the New Day got eliminated early, but I thought this was the match of the night. Crowd was really into it, a lot of crazy moves. In the end, in the end, it came out of Sheamus versus Cesaro and Cesaro versus the Usos. Cesaro put Jay in the sharpshooter. Jimmy tried to save him, but Sheamus hit J Jimmy with a broke kick, and Jay tapped out. After the match, it looked like Sheamus and Cesaro was about to shake hands and, as they finally been the same fans and finally be friends. But Sheamus faked it, so that didn't happen. Fans cheered Cesaro and booed Sheamus. It was a solid four-star match. Next was the Cruiserweight Championship, the, Pi the Brian Kendrick versus Kalisto. Had, had Kalisto won, the Cruiserweight division would be transferred to SmackDown. Very good match, although the crowd was quiet and worn out for the 10-on-10. It was pretty much a filler match, but it was a good one. In the end, Baron Corbin attacked Kendrick to get him disqualified. And they get the DQ win, and then um, attack Kalisto. Backstage, SmackDown general manager asked Corbin what he was doing, and Corbin said he didn't want twerps on SmackDown. Brian said he'll deal with Corbin on Tuesday. My prediction is that he fires Corbin, and Corbin goes to Raw and fuses with Cruise Weights. The men's match. Where we saw AJ Styles, Dean Ambrose, Randy Orton, Shane McMahon, and Bray Wyatt take on from Seed SmackDown take on Team Raw of Kevin Owens, Chris Jericho, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, Braun Strowman. Ambrose was eliminated first with a running power slam, um, so he was out first. This match had a lot of funny moments. Strowman was outside the ring, was trying to get in to, to break up the count, to break up the ten count, but James Ellsworth, SmackDown's mascot, grabbed him and um, prevented him from getting in the ring. And, as James Ellsworth was um, First match was against Braun Strowman. Strowman chased Ellsworth up the entrance ramp and threw him off the stage through the table. Oh, um, then Owens was t disqualified after he attacked the style, AJ Styles with list of Jericho. Jericho saw his list destroyed. He's like, oh no! So that was a funny moment. Lots of funny moments. Jericho's list is probably the most entertaining thing on Raw. Or it hit Jericho with the RKO and, won and eliminated him. Shane McMahon was eliminated by Reigns after a spear. Oh, it was kind of weird when when Roman Reigns pinned Shane McMahon. Um, the referee counted it too, and then um, he stopped the, call, the count so to check out Shane McMahon. Well, that's because Shane McMahon was legitimately knocked out by um, Reigns. So I don't think Shane McMahon should be wrestling anymore. He's very old. He's very fragile. 
It, it came down to Roman Reigns versus Orton and Wyatt. I was laughing when Rollins got eliminated. Oh, oh one more thing about Reigns and Rollins. Ambrose came out and they delivered a triple powerbomb. The four, the three former Shield members who made their debut at Survivor Series four years ago delivered a triple powerbomb through the table onto AJ Styles. So we saw a Shield reunion. Wouldn't be surprised to see the Shield reunite be sometime in the future. But anyhow, it came down to Rollins and Reigns versus um, Ambrose and Orton and uh, Wyatt and Orton. Um, or Wyatt eliminated Rollins, so it was just two on one versus Reigns. I was laughing because Roman Reigns was portraying his Superman character to take out the Wyatts, but he didn't take out the Wyatts. Um, Reigns went for a spear on Bray Wyatt. Orton pushed Wh Bray and he got took the spear himself. Bray Wyatt hit Sister Abigail. One, two, three for the win. Oh, also Luke Harper of the Wyatt family interfered, so the Wyatts beat the Shield and Team SmackDown beat Raw. Why does SmackDown always win these major matches? Survivor Series 2005, Break of Nights 2009, 2010, all went to the blue brand. And now for the controversial main event. Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar. Less than 1 minute and 26 seconds. Goldberg hits two spirits of Jack Hammer to win. Opinions are mixed about this. Some people like it, some people hate it. I do not. At WrestleMania 30, Brock Lesnar ends the Undertaker's rest streak. Four months later, that's SummerSlam, he takes on John Cena, the man whom WWE built their entire company around for a decade, and beats him in a lopsided squash match where Cena put on very little offensive moves. So they built up Lesnar as this unstoppable force. Whoever beats him is the man who set to be set up as the face of the company. The plan was for Roman Reigns to beat him at WrestleMania 31. But because Reigns wasn't getting over the crowd, Rollins cashed in the money that Benny could pin Reigns to win the title. Lesnar beats guys like Ambrose, Orton, and The Undertaker again. Well, he lost Undertaker due to controversy because of that timekeeper thing. But, um, yeah, Lesnar had a lot of momentum, and he loses it to a 49-year-old WCW legend in 1 minute and 26 seconds. That's a weird booking decision. Another problem I have with this is a few years ago at Teenage Victory Road 2011, 